this match review comes to us from Sasha Pines, who is only having 146 hours of Dead by Daylight. So I don't really expect most players to be even like moderately competent at macro and micro pressure. So controlling the gens, having good chase and that sort of thing until like a thousand ish hours. So uh, you are far behind that at that uh, at this point, which is not a bad thing. Uh, you will get there. But that just means that there's gonna be a lot of like mechanical stuff that you're like, you're not gonna have down pat yet. But that's totally okay. You will just learn that by playing the game, but there's gonna be a lot of stuff that I'm just gonna like, I won't comment on because it's like, you know, you'll just learn that by playing. You'll learn that by continuing to do things. That is totally fine. Um, you are playing uh, Knight, which is a very, very firm B tier character. Uh, when played right, it has a lot of like uh, both chase and macro pressure with the ability to send guards out for different purposes to do different things. Um, in terms of the map, though, you're probably on one of the worst killer maps in the game. <laughs> Batam, uh, all forms of Batam are infamously known for being pretty bad for killer because of having three main buildings and a shack, uh, along with a lot of fairly good tiles in between. So it's pretty abysmal for killer. Um, Batam 1 and 2 especially can be pretty bad too. Um, so <laughs> right up there with like Eerie Disturbed Ward is kind of the worst killer maps in the game. So that's probably going to play a role, especially if you're fairly new. Um, yeah, so <laughs> equal parts, don't blame yourself uh, for, you know, not having a lot of hours, but equally also don't blame yourself for uh, the map because the map's just kind of awful. And hopefully... Hopefully they change that uh, sooner rather than later. So, yeah, let's go ahead and see what your add-ons and your points are. Okay, you're running no add-ons, <laughs> which is something that I would never recommend, period. I know a lot of people recommend, like, learn a character without their add-ons first. That way it's easier. Um, but I would argue that, like, a lot of the time in Dead by Daylight, you kind of just play with add-ons anyways once you start getting good at the game. So why not just get used to how game is <laughs> you know like i uh, like i as you know would like i constantly run out i never don't run out even if i'm running i'm having an off day where i'm like eh, i don't really feel like running the the, the good stuff i'll still run add-ons i'll just run like the brown add-ons so like realistically you're not really playing without add-ons often on killer so might as well just get used to it um and pixie can correct me on this um hold arms Dried horse meat, very, very good, excellent picks. Uh, Map of the, of the realm is still not bad. Um, it used to be required to play this character, but it's still a good pick. Um, so I would say that would be like the top three you're looking at uh, in terms of add-on picks for this character, which are yellows and browns. They're fairly cheap add-ons, so you can run those fairly consistently, which is really, really cool. Um, your uh, build, obviously, if you're, if you're new to the game, you probably don't have a lot of teachables uh, available to you. Um, so that's totally fine. So you're probably kind of running what you can and not like what you'd prefer to run. Um, so nowhere to hide, one of the best info perks in the game. I would probably pair this with another uh, kick perk, which you have done with Unforeseen. But in the future, as you're beginning to unlock more characters and perks, stuff like Pop Goes the Weasel, stuff like Eruption would go great with these two other kick perks that you already have. You can get some slowdown in there as well. Um, Hex Face of the Darkness can be like a good perk for like info and um, interrupting people on things. Uh, so not an awful choice. Uh, and Nurses, Nurses is one of those perks that's not really bad. It's just been kind of like power corrupt really uh, badly. Um, so this would probably be the one I would shirk if you were looking to replace it. But once again, like I said, if you're fairly new to the game, you probably don't have a lot of teachables. So I don't know if you have something better to put there. But that'd probably be like the Wink Link perk. I learned with add-ons and perks from those. Go through the bubble over and over again. Yeah, th that's that's not on like a killer to killer basis too, right? It's like if you're a like knight who has mostly like yellows and browns, it's like some of their best add-ons. Not as bad, but if you're somebody like good example with Zeno, uh, like if you love self destruct bolt, it's a purple and it's a, one of the rarer purples that he has. So <laughs> upkeeping that is very expensive and annoying. So I think it's like a character to character basis. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at the game. Also, if the game's too loud, let me know. I've been kind of messing with my audio settings a little bit, so. Okay, so one of the things that's like really good about Knight that makes him like really, really impressive in Chase is his ability to pincer. 
uh, their their survivors or sandwich them. It did nerf it slightly or change it slightly to be a little bit worse when they gave him his little power rework, but it's still like really, really good. So essentially what you do is you take either your assassin or the jailer like you put down and you have them chase the survivor, but you as the knight go chase them from like an opposite direction. So essentially you are forcing them into a lose-lose situation of either you run into the guard and you take a hit or they run into you and then you swing at them. Um, you had to have a perfect situation to do that there, but you did not. You kind of just like let the guard handle it. And the guard does not even get the hit. I do not think. It is Jailer though, so it might eventually get them. And depending on what marsh you might path unoptimally. Audrey. Oh, he does get her. This Jailer hunts forever, man. I think what I'm noticing initially is you're a little scatterbrained. Like you're trying to do too much at once. You could have had, there. there's two different situations where you could have had a down on Hinato and you could have had a down on Sable. But because you're trying to kind of like chase them both at the same time, you're ending up with neither of them down. You probably would have a better situation if you had just like focused one of them early on instead of like trying to do too much. Um, yeah, Carnifex has been, you probably didn't know this, because if you're fairly new, you may not, you know, know all the, the recent changes about the characters. Carnifex is kind of the worst knight, worst guard for, like, patrolling and chasing now. Um, basically, you want to use Carnifex for, like, chewing through pallets and stuff like that. That's kind of his main role now, but patrolling and, and chasing the survivors, he's not too good at anymore. So I'd pick a different guard for that. Emergency, <laughs> emergency, paging Dr. Karn, emergency. <laughs> yeah, also ZM Pixie, who is uh, here in chat, uh, she is probably the best night main in the community. Um, very, very excellent wealth of knowledge for the character. So if you want to follow their Twitch stream, you can learn more night knowledge, a great, excellent source. Most of the stuff I'm telling you are because I watch itchy streams all the time. <laughs> so it's just like secondhand knowledge, you know? Oh. Hey, okay, we're getting some info there. You get kind of hung up there. Oh. This is what, what we like to call on Batum. The Forbidden Door. The reason we call it the Forbidden Door is because if you break this door and you don't have like a super aggressive anti-chase power, they are able to run this into the school over the little awning vault all the way back through here over and over and it's an infinite. Um, so you need something like like artist birds or like a blight rush or something to circumvent this or else they can just run you here forever so unless you absolutely absolutely have to in emergency for example if a team is saboing a lot and your only available hook is like right outside this door don't break this door don't break this door you can break the other one at the other end if you need to but typically you leave this closed <laughs> Yeah, because like we know that's stinky, but how can we expect like new players to know that? And then they end up suffering as a result. <laughs> Good, there's some now assassin. You have a very high DPI. <laughs> you are you are like flicking all over the place. You could have kicked that to see if anybody was like kind of lurking around with nowhere to hide, but that's just like a minor thing. Okay, I can get it there, that's cool. So this is making me kind of nervous, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, you're doing good so far. Keep in mind too, another thing you can do is you can send guards to like, you know, kick gens and stuff like that. 
that is another thing you can do. You can use Karn if you're looking to actually just go kick the gen and keep doing whatever you're doing. But also you can use the, the guards to like stall out people by kicking things. Because like on the surface, you're like, why would I ever send Assassin or Jailer to kick something? Because they take forever to do it. That's precisely why. Because if you want somebody to not have access to vaulting back over a pallet and the Jailer's taking like 10 years to kick it, then they can't vault it and you just win the chase. Same thing with a gen that's like close to done. You want to delay a little bit. It's like if he takes 10 years to kick it, that's, you know, they can't just get right back on it after Karn um, gets done slicing it. So there is some uh, weird utility with that as well. Catch up, dude. That ah! Leon is very laggy. Uh, not your fault. You get kind of stuck here. You should have just went around. Typically, you don't do what you just did there because there's an anti cape camp feature and there's anti-camp features in almost every killer every killer's kit almost every killer's i'm looking at you dracula <laughs> um where uh you can't just like harass people at hook because it's not healthy for the game uh knights is if a guard is like uh, uh aggroed onto someone and the moment they go for the unhook the guard hunt cancels so i'd be careful about that if you're going to do that wait until at least after the unhook is completed Thankfully, it did end up working out that way because you, it was you had a little bit of a late spawn there, but like that was definitely risky. I would have definitely used Karn to kick that gen real quick because that gen is almost done. They did end up back on her, which is good. <laughs> I think this whole server is laggy. Just like she looked really off too. I would have just tucked her. Don't get too greedy. Yeah, you don't seem to be aware you can use the guards to kick things. That would do you a lot of good. Yeah, I'm being a goof here and not paying attention. I'm just running straight into you. Oh, I would have picked Sable up. You have more hook progress on Sable than him. Yeah, but say, I think you think confidently because you had Hanato and Chase that, like, they wouldn't pick her up, but yeah. Also, once again, Arn mostly used for Chase is like a last ditch effort. Not something you should be intentionally doing. What is this submitted? Good question. Uh, three days ago. Submitted three days ago. <laughs> I got him. You have a lot of pressure right now. But keep in mind that nobody's dead. So while you're playing well, you, you need to get somebody dead soon. Typically, you need to have somebody dead in Dead by Daylight by, by two gens. And you're getting kind of close to that. Yeah, because especially with Karn, that time is going to run out real, real quick. I still think he made a mistake by letting uh, Sable get away there. That might be where this match gets really, really close. Luckily for you, Leon will be on second after this. So. That's a good pressure. Hey, you actually used Karn to break some. Good job. I didn't mean that facetiously. Like, I was being serious. Do that more. Especially at pallets. Especially at pallets. Okay, I'm actually shocked I got him. Nice. If it also makes you feel better, this is a complete aside. My DVD in terms of FPS, I'm seeing up there in the top left corner does the exact same thing. I set it to 120 and it just goes between like 90 and 120, like very invariably. I don't know why, it's very annoying. Other games don't do that to me. 
You see two people going for that hook. That's not gonna lie to these guys. Or not to, he's getting bodied by the guards. <laughs> he's having a rough time, man. They on his death hook, so I would go after him. Oh, that's unfortunate. If you just be more patient, you get that. He might have DS. It'd be on 120 as well. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like the game is very well optimized for 120 things. <laughs> And that's probably why they didn't even give you the option to set it to 120 unless you went in the files for a while, huh? Only it makes sense. You're staying very active, and that I do think is really great. Like, you're not leaving a lot of down downtime. I do think you already would have been at this position of immense pressure earlier in the match if you had just committed to a chase. Because that's where most of like the time deficit in your match is right now. Why do you why do you drop her? Why don't you just take the hook? You should have 100 percent just taken the hook, though. You got extremely greedy here. I think that's like my main flaw that I'm seeing in your gameplay, at least currently. Is that like you're just trying to do so much. And like you're making the match like unintentionally harder on yourself because you're greeting. Yeah, that makes sense. That's actually, you know what's fun? Uh, like, doing that in Dead by Daylight in general is kind of like, a, like, not good. Survivor, killer, whatever. Like, zigzagging? Like, it's just generally, like, a, a way to just lose distance in movement. Like, it's, te it's typically just, like, something there's never a reason to do. It's just, like, it's something that's, like, it's across the board. It's something you shouldn't do. Maybe. Why are you not picking people up? You have two people who are death hook on the ground. You should just kill them. If you can end the game here, but like one bad choice and like he gets them all up. Okay, thankfully they don't. Also one unbreakable and this also does not. Okay. Uh oh, that was very risky. It did work out, but it was very risky. Let's see. EDCs. Okay, you just give them, you just let them chill and do a farm with them. Okay. All right, so in terms of your main takeaways, first, your first main takeaway, which is something that I think is the reason this match was super close for you, is something I was harping on the whole time is like, you're trying to do too much and you kind of like drop the spaghetti a little bit. Like you end up like losing a lot of pressure because you're trying to apply too much pressure at the same time. Like I said, at the beginning of this match, you had two chases that were like, would have been ended really quickly if you committed to them, but you broke chase twice when you could have just had the down early. And that was that was a time sink at the beginning. Um, and then, like I said, at the end there, if Hinato actually loops you well there, the game continues. If even one of those players has Unbreakable, the game continues. You had two death hook gamers on the ground and you chose not to hook them and just have them out of the game to go for the greedy play. And while it did work out, the point of the match is to teach consistency, like things that'll work every game, not things that just work because they happen to work. Correlation is not causation. <laughs> that is that is that is not a thing. And it's something that Dead by Daylight players, not saying you, but it's something that Dead by Daylight players struggle with a lot is if it happened, clearly it's it's intrinsically true every time I do it. Um, if I run Trapper and I run no perks and I get a 4k, clearly Trapper's not as bad as people think. It's like, no, correlation's not cause issue. Um, so we try to teach good habits that work all the time and are far more consistent. So um, try to commit a little bit more if there's one, if there's a way to summarize this. Try to commit a little bit more. Don't try to do way too much and overload yourself and end up giving away pressure. I will say Knight is an excellent character to feed that kind of I want to do a lot at once kind of kind of a play style. So you're playing the right character. Absolutely. Um, just make sure you're committing to your chases and uh, getting your death hook gamers out. And don't try to overload yourself because you may be accidentally giving them leeway when you're trying to just apply pressure. Um, second, I would use my guards uh, more to, to damage things and kick things because I didn't really see you doing that. Um, I didn't see you using Karn to smash gens. I didn't see um, you doing... Uh, using Karn to like kick through pallets. You weren't really doing that. Um, you were kind of using, you were using the guards really, really well. 
Um, besides the use of Karn in Chase, <laughs> Karn uh, should not be something that you're uh, throwing out for Chase unless the other two are on cooldown and you don't have access to them. So I, I, that could even be its third own takeaway. It's like Karn is... They definitely, when they made the changes tonight, they were like, Karn, you have a very, very specific role. <laughs> you will not be the chase guy. Um, so that definitely changed when they updated the character. So uh, I would not be using him for chase unless you have to. And you definitely sent out like Karn all the time, just kind of willy nilly as if he was like this, the equal strength in those situations and roles to the other two. I guess it'd be a fourth takeaway for this is that I didn't really see you trying too much until like kind of like the end game there to try to pincer uh, the survivors, which is using the guard to force them one way and you go the other. You kind of started getting the hang of it and started doing it more as the match went on. But there was definitely times in the early and mid game where like you were almost avoiding that situation for some reason. And that's still like a really, really big part of this character's pressure. So I would definitely go out of my way to do that more. But yeah, I think that would be... <laughs> That is four. That is a lot. So I'll work on that for now. And then, you know, you're more than welcome to submit more. So we can see where you've been since then. It's also kind of funny, too, because like <laughs> people be like, well, I took your advice and now I can't submit another one. I'm like, that's great. It's like, you know, it's like <laughs> this is going to be like a weird comparison. But match reels are kind of like rehab. It's good if you don't need it, <laughs> you know, I, like I don't want to see you again. I want you to get better. I want you to not have to need the resource. Uh, to be able to, you know, do things on your own and exist independently and succeed, you know? It's good if you can't submit a match for you. And it's funny because there's always a lot of people that, like, um, like, they'll lament. They're like, I, I'm doing too well to submit a match for you. I'm like, is that not a good thing? Is that not a good thing that you don't need the, the, the help resource? That's a good thing. It's absolutely a positive. I feel like people should rejoice that, not be like, aren't can't submit one. Yeah, we'll work on those four.